Hello, my name is Mariana Abdul. I'm a married woman, a proud mother of seven kids, four boys and three girls. And this is a ministry of CCV Jerusalem Ministry, a ministry that is laying a platform for everyone. When I mean everyone, is a platform that we have a word for you, young man. We have a word for you, young girl. We have a word for children. We have a word of you, servant of God. We have a word of you, wife of servants of God. This platform, we are there to cater for all issues that are bringing distractions in ministry, issues that are bringing distractions in marriages. So don't forget to subscribe so that in every topic, in every talking that we are doing, you will be part of us. I'm 100% that it's going to make you, it's going to activate you, it's going to awaken you, it's going to give you strength. It's going to inspire you. And it's going to bring a transformation in your lives. And you're going to realize that God is real. Because the girl that who was there is the girl that is still here. The God who was healing the blind, the same God we have. The God who was lifting people from ashes. To something that God is still real. When you follow up with my my talking, because I don't want to preach. People have preached. I just want to share. I just want to encourage someone. I just want to encourage someone. I just want to share what is in me. I just want to share through experience. Because we are sick and tired of dramas. We are sick and tired of hearing God is doing, God is healing. And yet we don't have real testimony that you can point a finger on. So, Jerusalem Ministry, we are here laying this platform that we have evidence of what God is doing. A platform to give the, the, to give the church a chance to cry on. To give the women, the pastor's wife, the wives of men of God, a chest and a shoulder to lean on and to share what they are going through. Because if there are people who live a hypocrisy life, servants of God, their wives, they live a hypocrisy life. Why? They have nothing that is bothering them in life. They can share with anybody. Because everybody in church is bringing their issues to them. So, when you really find a servant of God going to her member, even if he is mature, and telling the person, I'm going through this, this, this. No. They know you are a leader. They know you. You talk with God. And that's why, <coughs> excuse me, we have laid this foundation for that. Like today, I had a thought. I've just, I, I have just meditated by myself. It came out from a conversation I had with my friend. And I went into deeper about it. 
and I came to realize, oh, I, I, I came to detect. Temper is not good. Temper is a dangerous, dangerous virus. Because, why am I saying this? Do you know things that temper have done in your life? Do you know what anger has done in your life? Temper is a dangerous, something very acidic. Temper is like a bomb. It can finish something that you have created for many years and demolish it. Temper, it can put you in a state that something will keep on raising years after years. Temper is dangerous. And why am I saying this? When I was meditating, how Lucifer was being thrown into earth is where I was meditating and looking into deeper what was going in God's mind. Because Lucifer is a distractor. Lucifer is a stubborn. Lucifer is somebody who is very cunning. And to my own opinion, this is Mary Ann's. To my own opinion, I started asking myself or trying to say, actually I was just talking to God because I was alone. I was just talking by myself and I said, God, if I were you, I could make sure I throw Lucifer on this earth when she is an empty vessel, a useless thing, and a shapeless thing, and the ugliest thing that nobody would look at. But look at our God. Look at our Father. He gave Lucifer the best voice, the best vocal. He gave Lucifer. Lucifer was a very beautiful angel. As it is recorded, Lucifer was one of the favored angels. But God had temper. When he came and find Somebody is trying to share my glory. Somebody is trying to be like me. He took hold. I was just imagining the grab that God had and throwing Lucifer on earth. God did not. Think the consequence of throwing Lucifer with all the good things, with the, all the attractive face, body, with all the best voice, vocal, with full of favor on earth that you try to be his competitor. If he tried to be like God when he was in heaven, what do you think when God threw him on earth? He tried more and more to compete with God. Up to date. Lucifer has brought a lot of distractions in marriages. A lot of destruction in serving God. A lot of destruction in churches. A lot of destruction in our nations. 
So, what I was, I, I was meditating by myself. I was saying, God, are you sure this was not temper? Are you sure, God, this was not results of temper? Temper is dangerous. Man of God, temper is dangerous. Woman of God, temper is bad, is wrong. It can drive you to a path that you live to regret the rest of your life. What does the devil does today? Sabotaging God's work, God's blessing, God's way. He's very good in bringing destruction, misunderstanding, fights. Why? Because he came on earth with everything that God had given her. Okay? So, in short, I'm trying to say what? Temper is wrong. In leadership, temper is wrong. When you become a leader who is always doing things in temper, you're gonna mess up in the ministry. You're gonna mess it in the church. You're going to mess it in the organization. You're going to lose very potential people in the organization. You're going to lose very potential people in the church, in the ministry. People that had been carrying your vision very well. People that have been holding you very well because of temper. You disconnect yourself from them. Temper is dangerous. We have to be conscious of temper. We have to pray God. We have to cry for this spirit. Because the destruction that temper brings, it's not something that is recoverable. 90% you don't recover things that you did in temper. They are gone. They are gone. How many marriages have break because of temper? How many churches have break because of temper? How many men of God have lost the anointing of God upon their lives because of temper? How many women and men of God that have lost the talent that God gave them because of temper? Temper is dangerous. Temper is wrong. Temper gonna ruin our lives. Temper can ruin our nations. How many presidents have done wrong and evil things because of temper? It is a dangerous thing. We have to be conscious of temper. I have been a victim of temper, anger, and I know things that I have lost in my life. The path that I'm trying to walk you through, they are the paths that God has walked me through, and I have seen the victory, and I have seen the healing, and I have seen the messes that I have been in in my life because of temper. But good news, our God is merciful. Our God is a God of again and again. Our God is a God who restores back. King Nebuchadnezzar when he did evil when he wronged, when he sinned against the kingdom. God took Nebuchadnezzar away and threw him in the desert where there was no food. 
had Neb and Nebuchadnezzar started feeding on grass like animal. Servant of God, man of God, woman of God, please don't allow the Holy Spirit to take you to the desert because of things you did in temper. Don't allow God to take you to desert so that you can come back to your mind and go back to serve Him and worship the real God, the true God. I'm talking to the servants of God, men of God, women of God. I don't care about the titles you have because I am not after your titles. But as long as you call yourself a servant of God and you know the ways you've been walking, you know how you've been mixing the real God and the magical God, you know how you've been mixing the word of God, making it a business? You know how you have not served God in real. You have betrayed the children of God. You have misread the children of God because they don't have any hunger of God anymore. 80% of members in church, they don't go to church to seek God, but they go to church to seek the servant of God. They go to church to seek for miracles. They go to churches to seek for, for the holy water, the anointing oil. Oh my God. Servants of God, this is a high time. Take off the comfort zone. Take off your suits. Dress up, sack. Go and seek the face of God. Go and ask for the forgiveness. Men of God, you are changing wise like the wildry people. Servants of God. Sleeping with other women, members of church, prison worship girls, leaders in church. Adultery have become like greetings. Oh my God. I really wonder which heaven are you going? Which God do you really serve? That's why I always say the others are servants of God in quotes. But good news is the Holy Spirit is crying for your soul. Our God is not a God of confusion. God knew why he chose you, O man of God. God knows why he chose you, man of God. But you allowed the flesh to overcome what was meant for the Holy Spirit. <coughs> I'm sorry. The Holy Spirit is grieving because men of God have taken the glory of God. Why are you sharing the glory of God? Why are you sharing the glory of God? Don't wait for that moment. You'll be taken to the wilderness. Where there is no food, where there is no human being like you, where there is no buildings, 
for you to come back to your senses. For you to go down on your knees and ask for the forgiveness. Return back God's glory. Return back God's glory. The evil one have arise everywhere. Kills are taking places. Evil action, evil things are taking place. Why? Because people are lazy. There is no more praying. You just need water and sprinkle and sleep. You just need the anointing and apply and move on. There is no time to seek God. There is no time to cry for God. There is no time to meditate the word of God. There is no time for communication for a human being and his or her creator. Counterfeit. Counterfeit blessing. I am not against the anointing. I am not against water. But why are you sharing God's glory? Why are you not teaching the right thing to the children of God? Why are you teaching them they have to purchase the oil? They have to purchase the water to keep the demons away from their premises. Teach them the word of God and let the word of God deliver them. Show the children of God the right way. Whatever you are praying in their lives, let it be scripture. God is not happy of you, servants of God. God is not happy of you. Don't wait for that moment. Don't wait for that moment. Pick up your broken pieces. For God is faithful to make them back and make you an expensive vessel to serve him back in a mighty way in true way and according to his will in heaven don't do things in temper don't remain in that state of proudness because of temper. Pick up your broken pieces. For our Father is faithful and He is going to make a new vessel from your broken pieces. One thing I like about our God, He works with the rejected material. He knows how to work with the rejected material. Woman of God, servant of God, pick up your broken pieces. God is ready to restore that anointing. God is ready to restore that power. God is ready to restore the revival in your ministry. God is ready to open doors in your ministry that have ever, ever happened. Walk according to his will. May God bless you. 
Don't forget to subscribe as we continue to talk, to encourage one another, to rectify one another, to warn one another, so that we can walk this journey of heaven to heaven. God bless you. God bless you.